so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville <sighs> what is going on what is going on with african diasporan marriages what is going on with nigerian husbands abroad only last year june of last year obina ibukwe shot his wife angela and her mother in the head the wife survived but mama was not that fortunate obina took his life when he discovered that the police were closing in on him they lived in texas united states and they had a three month old baby together three months what is going on the case of 50 year old ochola who killed his 28 year old wife is still very fresh in mind Priscilla, his wife, was shot dead, after which he placed a call through to 911. And he said this, I quote, Yes, I killed the woman that messed up my life, the woman that has destroyed me. I am at Shalom West. My name is David, and I am all yours. They had two babies together, a four-year-old boy and a three-year-old daughter. What is happening? 52-year-old pharmacist Olufemi Oladapo didn't need to get a gun to get his done. He improvised with an aluminium baseball bat. After he was done plundering his wife to death, he asked the neighbor to please call 911 that his wife just got a heart attack. But when the police arrived, they found huge splatters of blood spilled all around the room. It was no heart attack. But unlike Olufemi, Azubike didn't run away when he killed his next wife, Chiamaka. He turned the gun on himself and ended it all. These are just to mention but a few. What is going on? This is not just an isolated case of a partner going off on their spouse. This is happening one too many times. This is a pattern we need to talk about it african marriages in diaspora especially nigerian marriages and here once again we have today's case the very sad case of taiwo owoye abodunde and just like her predecessors she met her tragic end in the hands of her own husband the one person who had sworn and pledged to defend and protect her in the sight of the law and before God. Before we go on, if you're watching without subscribing, please hit the subscribe icon and turn on your bell notifications because there's so much that you're gonna get from this channel. So let's proceed. The late Taiwo and her husband, Olubumi David Abodunde, were both from Ekiti State, southwestern region of Nigeria. They met at Otun Ekiti, in 2004 during a seventh day adventist church program organized for young people it wasn't love at first sight at least for taiwo but after much persistence and persuasion and pressure from david taiwo gave in and agreed to marry him they were married for 17 years 17 whole years almost two decades and their marriage was blessed with three gorgeous children three sons a 16 year old 14 year old and an 11 year old boy taiwo was an ophthalmic nurse working in one of the teaching hospitals in nigeria and her husband david olubumi was a self-acclaimed engineer the marriage between taiwo and Olubumi was not such a bliss-filled one. There are reports that he would constantly abuse his wife, verbally and emotionally, and it didn't take too long for physical abuse to be added to the list. So yes, whenever Taiwo doesn't meet up to the dictates or demands of her husband, she will be presented with a good dose of beating. This had been happening for the longest possible time in their marriage. Somewhere along the line, this couple agreed that leaving Nigeria for the UK for greener pastures 
and to seek a better quality of life was in the best interest of their family. And so they began the process. Taiwo left first and she did the whole hustling and bustling and trying to get a job, trying to get the house, trying to settle in. You know, all the many hectic preliminaries that new immigrants have to face to settle into a new country. Taiwo did all of that and when she was settled, when she was done with all the arrangements, she filed for her husband and children to join her. Some people have questioned why Taiwo had to file in for her husband, knowing their history, knowing his abusive and violent tendencies and behavior. But what could she have done? Forget her three sons in Nigeria and just move on in the UK? as though she never had kids? Of course there was no way Olubumi would have let go of the children and sent only the children to her. It was either all of them or none of them. No sane, responsible woman would leave all her children and just move on to a new country as a single person, forgetting them. So how can Taiwo be faulted? Yes, she filed in papers for her husband and her sons to join her. Besides, she must have thought that he would change. There is no way he could have come to the UK and start beating me here. He knows that the law frowns against that behavior. He knows there are consequences for it. His ideology about life and marriage would change when he gets here. She was late to realize that the only way an adult can change is if that adult is putting on diapers. Formed behaviors do not just vaporize into the thin air. Adults hardly ever change. So Olubumi David along with their children joined his wife Taiwo abroad. Taiwo was a nurse, a registered nurse, working so hard 13 hours on her feet to keep the family together, to provide, to play mom to three kids and wife to her husband, working her fingers to its bones to do everything. Overwhelmed, drained and stretched thin, but she kept on pushing. Her husband on the other hand was not doing much at the time career-wise. Well, understandably so. Sometimes it takes quite a bit of time to settle in properly in a new country, especially at that age. This was a 47 year old man. It wasn't like he had a clear career path in Nigeria. He was said to be a self-acclaimed engineer, if you know what I mean. So Taiwo was the one doing the fending and the providing. But it wasn't so long before the abuse commenced. Or can I say continued? I guess some things follow us abroad without the need for a visa. And one of the things that accompanied the abandoned days was Olubumi's frequent rage and violent temper. So shortly after joining his wife, Olubumi began verbally abusing her, calling her different unprintable names. And soon enough, he started beating her. Taiwo will toil long hours at the hospital, working herself to total exhaustion. And when she comes back home and falls short of her husband's expectations or dictates at the slightest provocation, Olubumi would pounce on her and beat the light out of her eyes. One of such days when he gave Taiwo a good beating was on the 15th of August, about four months ago. He had beaten Taiwo up over a disagreement, but Taiwo kept it to herself. She didn't report to the authorities. Come on, she couldn't have afforded to. She couldn't bear to hear the world say, her in-laws say, the internet people say. So because you are now a nurse, you are now a big woman. You are now a madam. You are now abroad. You are carrying shoulder up for your husband. You have started calling the police on your husband. All these Nigerian nurses, that is how they are. Once they start seeing money, they start insulting their husband. They don't want to stay in marriage again. They want to kick their husbands out. And here I am abroad, facing the challenges of doing everything alone without help without domestic help and I'm wondering what woman would have a decent responsible man 
and would rather have him out to struggle all alone as a single mother. Sit for a second and reflect on that. But let's go on with the story. So Taiwo did not report her husband. She kept it to herself. She bore it, concealed it, prayed about it, hoped that it will change, that it will not repeat itself again. <laughs> but it sure did. It always does. On Monday the 27th of November 2023, Olubumi had pounced on Taiwo once again and given her a good dose of beating. And at that point she knew. She knew for sure that the beatings were not going to stop. She knew that this was a pattern that had lasted 17 years and was not just going to come to an abrupt halt just because of location. Geography does not change people. She knew that she couldn't afford to raise her sons watching their father beat her at will. She knew it was dangerous for their mental health. She knew that it was grave injustice to herself to go out there and work so hard and fend for the home and when she comes back her reward would be a smackdown. She knew that her husband would never stop beating her and there was nothing else she could do to stop it. She reported the assaults to the police. Olubumi was arrested or invited but he got to the police station on account of Taiwo's reports and he was questioned. After all the questioning and the session with the police, he was released from police custody at about 6.20 p.m. on the same day on police bail. The bail conditions were first not to go to their house at number 239 Exning Road, New Market. Not to contact Taiwo either directly or indirectly except through a third party to arrange child visits and child contact. He nodded his head and consented to all the police conditions, signed the bail documents. But in his mind, he must have let out an evil, devilish smack. <laughs> he had plans. The very next day, Olubumi marched to their residence, a house he had been temporarily barred from coming close to. Oh, he made sure that he arrived at a time when he knew his wife would be around before she went to work. Filled with rage and revenge and an evil plot, he gained entrance into the house. And then he pounced on her, knocking her down to the ground, viciously attacking her. And then he put his hands down on her throat and strangled her to death. When he was done, perhaps he made no attempt to escape or maybe he was in the process of escaping, but he was still present at the residence when the police arrived. As fate would have it, the police visited the residence as a follow-up visit to Taiwo's earlier complaint. They had a pre-arranged meeting to mop up evidence about the assault allegations and upon entering the building there in the living room they found her lifeless body unresponsive on the floor and despite prompt medical attention paramedics declared her dead on the scene her husband was found right there in the premises and he was arrested on suspicion of his wife's murder. He has now been charged to court for his wife's murder and has appeared before the Suffolk Magistrate's Court. He was remanded in custody. From there, he would attend his trial. Their three children are now in custody of the United Kingdom Social Services. Traumatized. Her twin brother, Candy, Taiwo was a twin. Her twin brother, Candy, devastated beyond words. And her mother, in utter shock and disbelief, almost in coma. Imagine having your child travel abroad and you are there saying, Thank God, my sufferings are about to be alleviated. My daughter would help make my life easy. Only for you to hear that that child of yours has been murdered by the very man whom you handed her over to, to care for. A whole generation of family ruined. Why? What is the bone of contention? Why the repetitiveness of these occurrences? 
ego, pride, power tussle, gender roles, cultural differences, making adjustments, learning, unlearning, and relearning, control, finance, investment, and return on investment, entitlement, lack of respect, inability to adjust, rebellion, dashed expectations, conflict resolution. A lot, a whole lot are involved and we're going to have that conversation. Not in this video because this video has gotten long and I do not want it to stretch further. But in a subsequent video, we will. I just wanted to report the story first before we delve into the reasons, the causes and the way forward. But I would love you all to share your opinion. I would love you all to share your thoughts. I would love you all to share your sentiments and your feelings down in the comment section. While you anticipate my video on that, let it out down below on how you feel about this case and about the prevalence of these occurrences, especially in recent times. I had made a video, three powerful videos about the subjects on my other channel, Neze Pepe Rempe. Do you follow my other channel? I have a personal channel. I call it my intimate channel where I show a deeper side of me. Very interesting, very revealing, very relatable. I'm going to drop the link to that channel in the description box and pinned in the comment section. There are three videos I did on that channel and I kind of addressed this issue. I'm going to leave the links to that video in the description box. So after this, you can watch it and get my perspective to some of these issues. I am really, really saddened about this issue. This is a life, a promising life that can never come back. And not only this life has been ruined, so many other lives have been ruined also in the process. I really do hope her soul finds peace. I do hope that God grants her family the fortitude to bear this painful, needless loss. And I do hope that justice will take its full course. I'm going to be updating us about this case as it progresses. Please drop everything you think down in the comment section. So guys, yes, we have come to the end of today's video. If you're seeing me for the first time or if you've been watching without subscribing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up. Drop all your thoughts and feelings down in the comment section. Turn on your bell notifications and stay glued because we have so much coming your way. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, and this is Nezaville. I'll see you guys in my next one. For now, bye.